So to finish up section 3.1, uh, the first next group of problems we're going to be exposed to give us functions that are just written as an equation. And we're going to be asked to find the domain of that function and write the domain in interval notation. And in the grouping of problems between 46 and 67, there's kind of three categories of problems. There's functions that are square roots. And you can tell a function that's a square root because there's going to be a square root symbol in it. They're going to be functions that are fractions, and they're going to be easy to identify too because there's going to be a fraction symbol. And there's functions that are polynomials, and for the most part, polynomials just won't have square roots, nor will they have um, fractions. And we say a polynomial will look something like this. It'll be a times x to the n power plus b times x to the n minus 1 power plus dot dot dot. A polynomial is just a um, an equation that has positive exponents for the, the letters. If there's a fraction, there's no x in the denominator of a fraction, and there's no square root. This would be an example of a polynomial. It doesn't have a square root symbol. It does have a fraction, but this doesn't discount it from being a polynomial. Uh, polynomials can have fractions just as long as there's not an x in the denominator of a fraction. When we're going to find the domain of a fraction function, there has to be an x or something, something that involves an x in the denominator of the fraction. So for each type of problem, there's a different strategy to find the domain. We'll just kind of take them one at a time. So the first few problems that we need to do are square root problems. And the instructions that um, tell me how to find the domain of a square root is to set the argument, that is, set what's under the square root greater than or equal to 0. This will give me the domain as an inequality, and I'll change the domain to interval notation. So to find the domain of a square root, for my problem 46, similarly for your problem 47, the algebra to find the domain is just to set what's under the radical. In this case, in problem 46, I'm going to set the x minus 2 greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to set the x minus 2 greater than or equal to 0 and solve for x. And this is going to give me the domain in inequality notation. But specifically, the instructions ask me to find the domain in interval notation. So I need to change this domain in inequality notation into interval notation. As an interval, if I made a number line that had negative infinity on the far left, positive infinity on the far right, to represent this domain on a number line, I need to mark out 2, because 2 is the beginning of the domain. I'm going to mark it out with a square bracket. Or you can mark it out, if you learn this differently, with a, a closed circle. And we're going to make a line pointing from my square bracket or pointing from my closed circle towards infinity. Because to the right of 2, the numbers are greater than 2. This is the domain written as on a number line. This represents the domain more pictorially than this. I need to create either an interval from this or an interval from this. It's probably easier to see the interval from this because I can see the numbers that are needed for the interval. The numbers that are needed for the interval are 2, which is the start of the domain, and positive infinity, which is the end of the domain. The 2 is going to get a square bracket because of the or equal to uh, in the answer here. And infinities always get round brackets. So for number 46, the answer is going to be the domain is the interval 2 comma infinity. Square bracket on the 2 because of the or equal to, round bracket on the infinity because infinities always get round brackets. So next problem, problem 48 and 50, I'll do 48. To find the domain of 48, I'm going to set what's under the radical greater than or equal to 0 do the algebra to solve for x. That algebra just involves two steps. I'm going to minus 12 from each side. That will give me 3x is greater than or equal to negative 12. And then I'll divide both sides by 3. 
And that's going to give me the domain written as an inequality. The domain written as an inequality is x is greater than or equal to negative 4. I know that represents the interval from negative 4 to positive infinity. I don't have to create a number line that represents the domain. But if I were to do it, I would create a number line that had negative and positive infinity. The only other, other number other than the infinities that I need is negative 4 on my number line. Above the negative 4, because of the or equal to, I do a square bracket. And then I'd make an arrow pointing to the numbers bigger than negative 4. And on a number line, numbers get bigger as you read to the right. That's going to be a picture of my domain that I could get my inequality from. I'll put a square bracket on a 4, create a, a comma, and then create an interval by enclosing the infinity in a parentheses. So the answer for the domain of number 48 is the domain... is negative 4 comma infinity. So that's the first kind of the three types of problems that we need to find the domain for. The next problems that we need to find the domain for are fractions. And to find the domain of a fraction, you should have done this before, at least in intermediate algebra. To find the domain of a fraction, you ignore the numerator. The algebra that's required is to solve the denominator equal to 0. And when I do this, this gives me the number I'm going to put on my number line to create my domain. This gives me actually the number to exclude from the domain. The value of x that makes the denominator 0 is the value of x that if you plug it into the function, you get undefined. So as I try to go, go and do number 50, in number 50, to find the domain of f of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 3, I'm going to ignore the x plus 2, and I'm going to solve the x minus 3 equal to 0. This gives me, when I finish this up, the number that needs to be excluded from my domain. The number that needs to be excluded from my domain is 3. To finish up my domain, I'm going to plot, in this case, x equal to 3 along with negative and positive infinity on a number line and create intervals that only have round parentheses as opposed to square brackets. And I'm going to, when I plot these numbers on a number line, I'm going to create intervals. And I always get one more interval than the number, number of I, numbers I'm excluding from the domain. And when I create intervals, in this case, there's going to be two intervals. So to get my domain ready for problem 50, I make a number line that has positive 3, the only number I'm excluding from the domain, along with negative and positive infinity on it. And I'm going to create intervals with only round brackets. The first interval, I'm going to put a negative infinity and a 3 in it, separate it by a comma. In the second interval, I'm going to put a 3 and an infinity in it. These are the two intervals that make up my domain. The answer to problem 50 is the domain will contain the interval negative infinity to 3 and the interval 3 to infinity. And when you have multiple intervals that make up a domain, you usually separate them with a union symbol. It's probably worth a second to look at these things graphically. So um, to show you the domain of problem 48 graphically, I can sketch a graph, hit y equals, clear out anything that happens to be in there. If I wanted to show you why the domain of this is negative 4 to infinity, I could graph the function second square root 3x plus 12 and do a zoom standard. And it's going to produce a graph that 
starts at negative 4 on the x-axis. It actually goes through the point negative 4, 0, and it goes off to the right forever. From this picture, I can tell the beginning of my domain is the x-coordinate of that point, which is negative 4. The end of my domain is the end of the graph, which is the right edge, edge of the graph, which is positive infinity. The reason this domain comes out to be that is because the graph starts at negative 4 and goes off to the right forever, and it doesn't exist to the left of negative 4. Square root graphs usually look like half parabolas on their sides. The reason the domain of the fraction comes to be two d disjoint intervals is because the graph is broken in pieces. If I graphed number 50 on my calculator, did the function fraction x plus 2 divided by x minus 3 with the same zoom standard, what's going to happen is the graph's going to have a break. Right at x equal to 3, there's going to be something called a vertical asymptote. And to the right of that vertical line, there's going to be a, a portion of the graph. And to the left of that vertical line, there's going to be a portion of the graph. So this graph has two halves. One half exists from the far left edge of the x-axis to the break at x equal to 3. This, is the, this right here is the interval from negative infinity to 3. And then this graph picks up again after the break at 3 and goes from 3 to infinity. Starts up at 3, goes to infinity. The graph doesn't actually go through, touch that dashed line that I drew. This is why I get a round bracket. The negative 2 that I didn't include in my computation that you'd get if you set the numerator equal to 0, the negative 2, if you set x plus 2 equal to 0, is the x-coordinate of an x-intercept. It doesn't belong in the domain because it isn't a left edge of the graph, it isn't a right edge of the graph, and it isn't a break. I can draw this vertical asymptote in here for you by kind of doing some trickery that we'll learn a little bit later. If I take the denominator and multiply it by 1,000, can, I can draw that break in a little bit more clearly. So you can see this is a line that goes, a vertical line that goes through 3. The graph exists to the left and the right of that line. If I make my window on my y's a little bit larger, you can see real quickly that the graph is going to get super, super close to this line. The bigger, I, the longer I make my windows in terms of the y, the closer this graph is going to get to this line. But this graph will never touch this line. It will always be a little off that line. All right, maybe that's a little bit more than you care to, to hear, but just maybe for some of you that are, are visual, that's going to hopefully help you out. When I go to do the domain for problem 52, I'm going to ignore the numerator of 2. I'm going to solve the denominator x squared plus 6x minus 7 equal to 0. Because there's a square and it's set equal to 0, probably factoring is the nicest way to solve it. So I'm going to factor that x squared plus 6x minus 7 into x plus 7 times x minus 1. I'll set the two factors equal to 0. When I set the x plus 7 equal to 0, I get x equal to minus 7. And when I set the x minus 1 equal to 0, I get x equal to 1. These are the two numbers to exclude from my domain. Now I'm going to take those two numbers and put them on a number line that also has negative and positive infinity and create intervals. I always get one more interval than numbers that I obtain from my algebra. I got two numbers from my algebra. I should get three intervals at this step. The three intervals are going to be negative infinity to negative 7, negative 7 to 1, and 1 to infinity. All round brackets when you're doing the domains of fractions. And my answer to number 50 is the domain is going to be those three intervals separated by union symbols. If you don't put the union symbols down, it does, it's not going to break my heart. I wouldn't take points off, but that's the proper way to do that. A union symbol is kind of a U, which means or. So 53 should be similar. 55 is a tricky problem. As I look at it, I kind of wish I didn't um, put it on the test, on the on the um, homework, but it's there. It won't be on the test, but it's here. It's a combination. It's a fraction and a square root. So I have to kind of do the um, square root domain or the square root algebra and the fraction algebra. 
and kind of integrate what they're telling me together. So the fact that 54 has a square root in it, even though that's buried in the denominator of a fraction, to find the domain of a square root, you take what's under the square root, you set it greater than or equal to 0, and you solve for x. So if there was just a, just a square root of um, x minus 3, and it wasn't buried in the fraction, the domain would be um, 3 to infinity, because this represents any number greater than or equal to 3, which would be 3 to infinity. Unfortunately, that x minus 3 is buried in the denominator of the fraction, and if you plugged 3 in for x and did f of 3, you'd get 2 over the square root of 3 minus 3, which is 2 over the square root of 0, which is 2 over 0, which is undefined. If I wrote my answer like this, this implies that 3 is part of the domain, which tells me that if I plug 3 into the function, I'm going to get a real numbered answer. But when I plug 3 into the function, I get undefined. So 3 is not, gonna, not supposed to be part of the domain. Finishing the fraction part of the domain um, is going to help me understand that I need to exclude that 3. So to find the domain of a fraction, you ignore the numerator, so I'm going to ignore the 2. I'm going to set the denominator equal to 0. And then in this problem, I'm going to square both sides. On the left side, squaring cancels out a square root. I don't need a plus or minus on the right-hand side because when you square a negative, it turns positive. On the left-hand side, squaring the square root just leaves me the x minus 3. On the right-hand side, 0 squared is 0. Now I'm going to add 3 to both sides and get x equal to 3. This is the number that needs to be excluded from the domain. The domain, if I did the domain of just the denominator and ignored kind of the square root, I'd get these two intervals. I'd get an interval from negative infinity to 3 and an interval from 3 to infinity. Whereas the square root gives me the domain is 3 to infinity. So I need to take the square roots domain and the fractions domain and intersect them together. Find out what they have in common. The square root tells me I can't have any numbers less than 3, so that this part of the domain needs to be excluded. I can't plug numbers less than 3 in because if I plug a number like 1 or 0 or 2 in, I'm going to get an i. So that any number less than 3 can't be part of the domain. For instance, if I did f of, let's say, 0. 0 is a number less than 3. f of 0 would be 2 over the square root of 0 minus 3. That's going to be 2 over the square root of negative 3. And the square root of negative 3 has an i in it. And i's, numbers values of x's that generate i's need to be excluded from the domain. All of these numbers, because they're not, they're less than 3, have to be thrown out of the domain because they would give you an i if you plug them into the function. So, so part of the fraction domain needs to be omitted because that makes the square root have i's, and part of the square root domain needs to be omitted because it makes the fraction undefined. So what I'm going to keep is this for my domain. I'm allowed to put, I'm not allowed to put numbers less than 3 because that causes any number less than 3. If I plug it in for x, I get an i. I'm not actually allowed to plug 3 in because if I plug 3 in, I get undefined. So in a, in a, intersecting these two uh, domains together to see what they have in common, I can't take any number less than 3, and I can't choose 3, but I'm allowed to take any number bigger than 3. The answer to problem 54 the domain for number 54 is supposed to be the interval from 3 to infinity and not including 3. Because if I plug 3 in, I get 0 in the denominator, and that any number that causes a 0 in the denominator can't be part of a domain. And I can't plug in any number less than 3, and that's what this tells me. I can plug numbers not including 3, but bigger than 3. I can't plug numbers less than 3, because if you plug those in, you get an i. This is not my best explanation, and these won't be on the test, these integrated combination problems. But um, I felt like doing it anyways. The next few problems are square roots without fractions, which, which is nice, but they're tricks because of the negative x. So for 56, to find the domain, which is what I'm asked to do, 
I take what's under the radical and set it greater than or equal to zero. When I do that, I snuck a one in front of the x because it's going to help my algebra be easier to follow. I'm going to solve this for x and put my answer on a number line to help me figure out what my domain should be. To solve this for x, I'm minus 5 from both sides. That will cancel the 5 on the left side, give me a minus 5 on the right side. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. And when you're dealing with inequalities, if you're dividing by a negative number, you need to flip the direction of the inequality. So I'm going to flip the direction of the inequality. On the left hand side, the negative 1 x divided by negative 1 gives me x. The greater than sign is going to flip to a less than, actually it flips to a less than or equal to, and the number gets to be positive 5. On a number line, if I wanted to represent this interval, I put my infinities on my number line and the 5, and to represent numbers that are less than or equal to 5, I need to go to the left. I'm going to put a square bracket on the 5 because of the or equal to, and I'm going to make an arrow pointing to numbers that are less than or equal to 5, now I'm going to create my interval. My interval is going to start at negative infinity. Infinity is always get a round bracket. Pick up a comma and put a square bracket on the 5 because they are equal to. For number 56, my answer is going to be the interval from negative infinity to positive 5. So your problem, oh, your problem 57 should work the same way. I'm going to make a quick vote right here. Let's just go ahead. The video's getting, it's already been a pretty long video. I know I'm not going to ask this. Let's skip this. If you want to try 59, um, 59, the domain is going to be um, negative infinity to positive 3 with a round bracket. Just in case, if you want to take a stab at 59, this is the answer you should get. It's not going to be on the test. It's not, not a skill that's even that important in, in a calculus class. I don't feel bad about having you skip that. But if you give it a go and you don't get that answer, stop by or ask me in class and I'll show you how to do it. The next four problems are all polynomials. And every polynomial has a domain from negative to positive infinity. So there's going to be no algebra. When I look at problem 60, the graph of this is going to be a line. The reason the domains of square roots need algebra is because a typical graph of a square root kind of has a half parabola on its side. It has a, a physical stopping point or physical starting point. Fractions usually have at least one break in their graph. There's usually something called a vertical asymptote, but the graph of a fraction may look something like this. Fractions have algebra to do to find their domain because there's a break and I need to identify the break in my work. Polynomials are, don't have a, a physical starting point and they don't have breaks. If I took the function 3x plus 6 that's presented to me here, oh, if I hit y equals and graph the function 3x plus 6, do a zoom standard, polynomials have graphs that don't have a physical starting or stopping point, and they don't have any breaks. Every polynomial, the graph is going to exist unbroken from the far left edge of the x-axis to the far right edge of the x-axis. Each of the rest of the problems we're going to do to finish up the section, the domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. If you do any algebra, the algebra is going to find the x-intercept probably. In problem 60, if you did algebra and set 3x plus 6 equal to 0, that algebra would come back with x equal to negative 2, which is the x-intercept. It's not the, stop, start, like not the starting point of the graph, nor is it a break in the graph, so it wouldn't belong in the answer. So for each of the next handful of problems, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67. Each one of these are polynomials. You see there's no fractions, there's no square roots, and there's just x's with positive exponents. When I go to do their domain, it's going to be negative to positive infinity. And if I do any algebra with the function that's presented to me, in all likelihood, I'm going to well, found the x-intercept, but the x-intercept on the graph of a polynomial doesn't belong in the domain physically because it's not a starting point or a break in a graph. So for each of the problems, 
62, 64, 66, 60, 61, 63, 65, and 67 because they're all polynomials. There's no work to do for the domain. And you can really, in this section, separate. it's really easy to distinguish the square roots, fractions, and the domains. The square roots have square root symbols. The fractions have fraction symbols. And everything else in this section is a polynomial. A polynomial is just a series of x terms being multiplied out, essentially, with positive exponents. Uh, problem 65, hopefully you know that that graph is a parabola. So I won't go any deeper into this. I feel that's kind of, any more that I say is just not going to make it any more clear. And it's just going to maybe confuse the situation. So that will be the end of the section, hopefully. It wasn't the worst thing. We have some long, long sections in this chapter, so just be prepared.